Welcome to another episode of the Alamo City Sportscast with Mike Jimenez and Joe Garcia. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Join the discussion as we broadcast live from beautiful West San Antonio. And remember to tip your hosts as it helps the show grow. What's up, San Antonio? What's going on, South Texas? This is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you. Joe is on the west side of San Antonio. I'm stranded just outside of Houston in Conroe, Texas. Joe, I blew out my tire on my Tacoma, baby. But somehow, some way, I'm coming back home to the Alamo City today. But you know what? The lead story is not about me. The lead story is about your Dallas Cowboys. What a thrilling victory last night on Sunday Night Football. 20-17 to over the Pittsburgh Steelers on a fourth down and goal touchdown to win the game. Jalen Tolbert, where have you been for the last three years? Having a career game, Dak Prescott having one of the best games of his career. This was a game, Joe, that was super boring for about two and a half quarters, got thrilling down the stretch. Dude, Mike McCarthy might have kept his job because of this game, or at least for another week. But, Joe, you are the Cowboy fan. How are you feeling today as a Cowboy fan? Oh, I'm going to show you how I'm feeling. This is for all the haters. Way too ethnic to start a Monday morning, Joe. Way too ethnic. We have to, man. (laughs) And we're talking about you yesterday, too. It was funny. No, but um, we were watching the game over at the Twin Peaks. I was hanging out with Pledger. Sean went. Steph, you know, Chicana Fuerte was there. Uh, Mario Cavazos went, hung out with us. My good friend Ed Luna was there hanging out with us, too. So it was a good good little crowd we had watching the game. And, you know, I mean, it was a rain delay. You know, we're like, oh, my God. It took a little bit of time off the off the game, you know. So we're kind of delayed there. We're laughing at everybody getting drenched on. But the game was actually entertaining. I mean, from a perspective of a casual fan, you know, you're like, oh, this is boring. But both teams were playing great defense from the get-go. You can't say that the Cowboys' defense didn't show up for this game because they did. The defense was there. The problem was Dak this time because he threw interceptions. And even as a Cowboy fan, you're so frustrated because you know that the team could be up on the Steelers, but Dakota Rain Prescott, I mean, he had three interceptions, I think, for the game. You know, that's that's not helping your team any. Yeah, Dak Prescott, his uh, stats for last night, he had two interceptions. He had uh, 28, for, 28 for 42, 352 yards. Two touchdowns and two interceptions. He also had a very weird, awkward, uh, you know, uh, intentional grounding somewhere in the third quarter that was kind of awkward. But Dak had, for me, the biggest play of the game, recovering the fumble there at the four-yard line. Johnny on the spot right there, man. Ball pops out. Donald going for the one-yard touchdown to win the game. Nobody got popped right there at the line. Ball squirts out. It's either going to be the the defensive end or the uh, quarterback, Dak Prescott, getting the ball. Dak jumps on top of it. That was a big, big play. So it's kind of funny because you see Dak Prescott. You're right. He did struggle, right? It was a 6-3 game at halftime. He did struggle early on. But down the stretch, that 70-yard drive didn't happen without Dak. Dak was finding his players – and it was also finding players that were not named C.D. Lamb. He was finding Kevontae Turpin, Lepke. He was finding various players that are not normally wide receiver one because C.D. Lamb wasn't, uh, you know, always there open. That play, though, that fourth down play to win the game, finding Tolbert in the end zone, was big for a variety of different reasons. A, it won the game. B, it showed that Dak, when the lights are on, can win from time to time. It also showed his um, improvisation because that was a busted play. And then Tolbert, who came in because of injuries at the wide receiver position, Brandon Cooks out with an injury, someone needed to step up, and Tolbert had a career-high 87 yards. This is a guy that was drafted out of South Alabama, third-round draft pick three seasons ago. The guy, you know, third-round draft pick, you're supposed to be on the squad. He was on the practice team for so long, 
because he sucked so bad as a rookie and he was trash as a second year player. Pedestrian numbers, third season. He had said before the season started during training camp that this was going to be his year to show that he belonged on the varsity squad, that he belonged on the Dallas Cowboys 53 man roster. Not only belonged on it, but was going to actually be an integral part of that. You see Brandon Cooks go down with an injury. Someone needed to step up as a wide receiver. Who would have thought that it was going to be Jalen Tolbert? Tolbert going out there, career high, 87 yards receiving, gets the game winning touchdown. I'm happy for him, man, because Tolbert has gone through so much over the last few years. I don't think he was ready for the NFL. You know, he was not playing with the best competition over at South Alabama, but he goes out there and he plays his ass off several receptions, gets the game winning touchdown. I mean, come on, man. I mean, it's, it's a great story. Sunday night football, fantastic. Yeah, it was a fantastic game for a Cowboy fan. You know, I was watching the game and, and I still couldn't believe what we were seeing, you know, because you would have all you would have thought looking at at what Dak had done, you know, throwing those interceptions and whatnot, that the Cowboys were not going to win this game. I mean, if you would have told me the Cowboys weren't going to win this game midway through, I would have believed you. You know, because it didn't look very good for them, but you got to give credit where credit is due. And being a, you know, a Cowboy fan, this is the the disparity of what happens during the, the context of a game and also the regular season. You have your ups, you have your downs, and at the very end, yeah. Dakota Rain Prescott did pay off. He was able to go ahead and get the Cowboys downfield and then win in dramatic fashion on the last play of the game. I mean, when everything was on the line and it mattered the most. Dakota Rain Prescott showed up and showed Cowboy fan he was worth the money that Jerry paid him. For one night. For, For one, one night. night. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I, I don't, I don't want to, to to rain on the parade or poo-poo any of this, right? But from a non-Cowboy fan perspective, here's what I saw, okay? I saw positives and negatives of the Dallas Cowboys. The positives is on the offensive side, you saw Rico Dowdle get, you know, almost 90 yards rushing. That was a, a big part of the Cowboys. The Cowboys changed the way that they were running the ball, right? They, they were just running up the middle, right? None of this, let's let the play develop or whatever. Just hit the hole and make something happen. Dowdle looked better, right? He even got that great touchdown there, the first touchdown of the game for the Cowboys, where he caught it on his back and he slid out of bounds, still holding on to the ball. Great touchdown. Rico Dowdle played well. The Cowboys defense played well without Micah Parsons and, and Demarcus Lawrence, and then they got an injury uh, in, in uh, of another defensive lineman earlier in the game as well. So the Cowboys played well defensively. One of the things that we talk about with the Cowboys is that they beat up on bad teams. You look at this Pittsburgh team coming in at 3-1. and one. They won the first three games of the season. They lost their fourth game of the season. Came in as, what, two, two-and-a-half-point favorites in this game. So the Cowboys not only got a road victory, but they were also the underdog coming into this game. I question what the Steelers' record is going to be six weeks from now. They might have started 3-0, and but they might be 3-7 and six weeks from now. And we might look back at this and go, well, the Cowboys just beat a bad team. I'm going to give the Cowboys their flowers right now because a win is a win is a win. And there's a big difference, Joe, between being three and two and being two and three. That's very, crazy. very big difference. Three and two, you're looking at okay, we're on pat, we're on pat pace to make the playoffs, right? Because if you go three and two, then you go six and four, then you go nine and six, maybe ten and seven gets you to the playoffs. You go two and three, you look at it and you're like, well, crap. You know, we're going to have to go play 750 ball the rest of the way in order to make it happen and make the playoffs. So the Cowboys kept their playoff hopes alive because they're going to go through a really rough part of the schedule going on up, up next. You know, when you have teams like Detroit, you have teams like the Texans and, and, and the Niners coming up, the Commanders coming up, the Falcons coming up. The Cowboys needed this win more than anything. Commanders getting a win yesterday. Dude, that team looks good. I know you didn't want to say it last last week, Joe, but Joe, you're beginning to believe in the Commanders at four and one. No, we said that even before the season started, the Commanders were going to be this sneaky good team you had to keep yeah. an eye on. And sure enough, look at what's happening. They're sitting atop the NFC East right now with the Cowboys in second place. The Eagles and Giants, they're in last place at at Eagles are at two and two, and the Giants are at two and three. 
Yeah, Eagles have the week off. They had a bye week. The uh, Giants got a win yesterday. So you take a look at it. The NFC East, everyone won. Everyone won, except for the the Eagles, who didn't even play. But, Joe, yeah. let me ask you this question, man. When you looked at the Steelers team yesterday, did you think that that was a good team that the Cowboys were playing? Did they play – because they were 3-1 and one coming in, right? Although they weren't playing a lot of great competition. But, again, a win is a win is a win. They were 3-0 and oh at one point in the season. Now they're three and two. Did you look across the field at the Steelers and think to yourself, yeah, that's a playoff contending team? Or did you think to yourself, man, that team just I No, this is a good team. It's a good Steelers team. You know, Cowboys finally showed up and, and played great at when it mattered against a good team. You know, Dude, I, I, can't, I can't see I can't, I can't see a team led by Justin Fields as a good team. I'm just saying I, I'm sorry. Steelers I'm sorry, Justin are a good Fields team, man. Justin Fields is over there playing his fourth game ever with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is not a very good team. Justin Fields yesterday, 15 for 27, 131 yards. Did have two touchdowns, uh, did no interceptions, but only 131 yards passing. Dude, I don't look at Justin Fields and think to myself, that guy's a good quarterback. I don't look at Najee Harris and think that that guy's a good running back. Not from a real-life perspective or a fantasy perspective. I mean, I understand a win is a win, but I look at that Steelers team thinking to myself, we're going to look at a team that started 3-0 and to end the season 5-12. and They're not a good team. They're not. Cowboys got the win that they needed to get, but I don't think Cowboy fans should be super excited as though, like, okay, we just saved the season, and all of a sudden we're going to be world beaters the rest of the way that we're going to go off and we're going to go on a tear. They beat a bad team. Best case scenario, they beat a mediocre team. Yeah, I still standard. think that. I think I think the Steelers are a good team. I didn't say I think they were a great team. I think they're a good team, and they're going to win some games, but I don't know it's going to be enough to get them in the playoffs. The same could be said for the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are all right, you know, but when it comes down to it, are they going to be uh, are they going to be able to uh, match up against these better teams that they're going to have to play here in the next couple of weeks? This is going to be where it's going to make or break their season. The Cowboys are like one or two win or one or two losses away from being out of it entirely. You know, it matters so much to win to keep winning because when you have the commander sitting at the top of the division right now at four and one, you can't afford to lose games no matter who your opponent is. And I think right now this is the gauntlet uh, for the Cowboys. The Cowboys have to show up because if they don't, they're going to, they're about two, two losses away from, from being out of it entirely. I like how you use the phrase gauntlet. We're going to go over that in a minute. But before we go into that, I want to get your impression on Rico Dowdle. The Cowboys needed a running game, right? There was nothing to be had there. Zeke Elliott still looks like garbage, right? He did get that big third and one uh, to kind of uh, move the sticks as the Cowboys were making their way um, uh, to, to the, uh, the, the go-ahead and winning touchdown. So he did at least get that one yard. Remember, Joe, we talk about this all the time, right? Third and one, right? Fourth and one, you got one yard to get. Just give it to Zeke, man. He's going to make it happen some way, somehow. Only 17 yards rushing. But when you see Rico Dowdle go out there for 89 yards, also receive for 20-something yards, get that big touchdown, that is actually something that the Cowboys were missing. The Cowboys had no running game, no threat behind Dak. And he went out there and played very well. The, the announcers were talking about how the Cowboys were hitting the holes differently. They weren't trying to let the plays develop. They weren't trying to get these things going where it takes two seconds to develop a play. Let's find a hole. Let's, let's, let's maneuver our way through. They're like, no, Rico, just find out. Just, just go. Just grab the handoff and make your way through. But, man, it goes back, dude. It goes back to the fact of there's got to be a hero in this game. And at the end of the day, the hero is Dak Prescott. And it had nothing to do with his arm, had nothing to do with his legs. It had everything to do with the fact that he recovered that fumble on second and goal with a minute to go in the game. But that was, that was the weird biggest play. play of the game for him. Yeah, it was such a weird play, though. It was like perfect timing. I mean, you couldn't have timed that any more perfect. Trying to jump over the stack, gets hit. Just dead on, man, with the front of the helmet, the head of the helmet, the ball pops out, and Dak is in the right place at the right time. If he was a split second late, Mike, this would have been a fumble going the other way, and that's all she wrote. Dude, okay, so you are a Cowboy fan. Yeah. You were at Twin Peaks watching this game. How much did your heart sink when you saw the ball laying on the ground at the four-yard line 
after that hit because the announcer says that that defensive back came in like a kamikaze. <laughs> that he just timed it perfectly, that he knew what direction they were going to go in, just knocks the ball out with his helmet, right? Yeah. You see that ball sitting there at the four-yard line. For a minute there, split second there, did you think to yourself, here we go again, not again, Joe? No, I mean, it's it was that type of night, you know, where the Cowboys – offensively we're having a lot of mistakes and you know you can attribute it to the field as well because the field was awfully wet because of all yeah. the the deluge that that ensued before which was a bunch of rain all over the place and you could tell some of the cowboys uh players were feeling that because there was a lot of injuries a lot of cramping up you know that kind of thing going on it just seemed like everybody was getting injured in this game now that's the disparity that i i, I was kind of looking at being a cowboy fan it's like if the Cowboys, in fact, did win this game, what's going to be the consequence moving forward? Because you kept losing players left and right due right. to injury. They were taking them off the field. They would come back, but I'm just like, this team's getting beat up out there. It's, they're playing a game against not only the field that's all soggy, but against the Steelers as well. And then there was a questionable call there where the Cowboys had obviously gotten the first down. And you could see where the player came down and it was obviously ahead of the sticks. Yeah, and then the refs, the refs went ahead and brought it back. I'm like, why? Why Why did that even happen? You know, and it's like you, you couldn't challenge it, I, be, I believe, because that was up to the review booth, right? So that was a big question mark for me. I'm like, why would they go ahead? And obviously you could tell the player was uh, uh, above the sticks and then they bring it back, you know, so... To me, that I, that was a, a busted play. But either way, you know, things like this happen in the context of the game. I'm happy and proud of the Cowboys for grinding it out. They played a poor game, no doubt, but they found ways to win. And that's what good teams do, Mike. They find ways to win when they I have bad them. games. They played a bad team, dude. The Steelers they, are going to be 4-7 and seven a month from now, dude. That is a bad team. Justin Fields is a bad quarterback. Najee Harris is a bad running back. That is a bad wide receiver crew. That is a bad defense. I'm trying to be nice, Joe. I'm trying to be nice. That was a bad team that they played. They you know what? The same, the same thing. Won. Let's get real here. The same thing could be said about the Saints. The Saints haven't played really good teams yet. They've played some bad teams, including the Cowboys. You know, the Cowboys, they beat them 44 to 19. They played the Panthers, man, and they beat up on them. They played the Eagles, and they lost to them. And the Eagles aren't a really good team. You know, they're all right. And then the Falcons, they lost to the Falcons. Now the Saints Falcons have another. Good, dude. The, Falcons no, the Falcons, I'm not saying the Falcons are a bad team. I'm saying dude, they lost to the Falcons. 500 yards this week, man. The Falcons <laughs> are a scrappy team, and I really like their style of play. The Saints also have. The Chiefs coming up, they got the Buccaneers, they got the Broncos, they got the Chargers, and then they got the Panthers again, followed by the Falcons again. So it's like, um, you know, your team too. It's like, you know what, man? They have some some work cut out for them as well. But well, the Saints. I can't, wait, I, I can't wait for Monday Night Football because I, I'm calling it right now. Saints are winning this game. The the the, the You're going to beat the chest the, out. <laughs> I'm going I'm to oh, stick the man. chest out right now. And I'm going to call it, or one of two things are going to happen, Joe. Either the Saints win this game or the refs give it to the Chiefs. I will give that caveat there because we've been seeing that all year long against Kansas City, against other teams like that, I mean, against Cincinnati, rather, where the refs just stick their head in and go yellow hanky in favor of the Chiefs. Every single time, that Chiefs team is not very good. Now, it is on the road, right? Arrowhead, I get that. But man, I have a little bit more confidence than I think. And you know what? You know, we'll probably be here tomorrow, right? And it's gonna be 48 to 10, right? <laughs> and, and, and and but for right now, I'm gonna beat my chest and say I like the way that my team's been playing. They've been in every single game, they've been up at the two-minute warning in all four games this season. They're a decent team, they're a decent out. I believe that my Saints are gonna play a good game today. That's what I'm but saying. you know what? There's things that go like this, Mike. At the end of the day, you're only as good as your record says you are. Right. Right. You know? So the Cowboys, though, the gauntlet that you're talking about with the Cowboys begins next week. They've got the uh, Detroit Lions going into Jerry World. 
And that's a, a, an interesting game for the Cowboys because the, the Detroit Lions with Jameer Gibbs and with Jared Goff at quarterback, Jameer Gibbs at running back, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, you got uh, Laporta at tight end. There's a lot of – you cannot be shorthanded defensively and go up against the Lions. Way too many weapons that you have over there. Then the Cowboys have a bye week seven. They come out against the Niners on the road. The Niners have been struggling without Christian McCaffrey. I know the backup running back's been getting stats and whatnot, but the Niners need to get some wins because the season's getting away from them already. Then you have Atlanta on the road against the Falcons. Kirk Cousins, balling, man. What a great game that he had against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 500 yards passing, an all-time record for the Atlanta Falcons franchise. Then the Cowboys host the Eagles. Whether the Eagles are good or not is yet to be seen, right? The Eagles seem to be struggling. But for some reason, the Eagles play the Cowboys pretty well. Then you've got a home game against the uh, Houston Texans. The Texans, who somehow beat the Buffalo Bills yesterday, got out to a hot start, held on for a three-point victory. And then on the road against the Washington Commanders, that is one, two, three, six very tough games for the Cowboys. Cowboys right now are three and two. They need to be six and five. They got to win three games, man. I think they can win the Philly game. I think that's I if there was any of those games that I think that is a gimme game, I'd say it's the Philly game. All the nope. other games, all the other games, I would say the Cowboys are are underdogs. I think right now what's happening too is the 49ers are showing that they're just not playing very well. Right. You know, and I think that's a very winnable game for the Cowboys. I think uh, the Falcons game is going to be a tough uh, game for the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys can win, depending if they uh, actually show up. Same thing goes for the Eagles. Now, the disparity that I have here with this um, schedule, Texans, Commanders, those two games there are going to be tough for the Cowboys because yeah. the, command, the, the Commanders are very good. They're a very good team. Their record tells you they are, you know, four and one. They're playing at a high level right now. The other thing is the Texans, while they might still have some problems, it, you can't discount that they are a decent team. They are a good team. Yeah, the you know? running game has struggled with, with Joe Mixon's injury. It has. But you know what? They're still finding ways to win. And this Texans team, I was looking at their defense yesterday, and their defense is solid. They're good. They have a decent defense. Now, mm -hmm. the thing is, you know, with injuries and whatnot, who does C.J. Stroud have to throw to? You know, that's the problem with the Texans. I think it's going to be, can they put up enough points to win games, you know, moving forward right. with the injuries? But you look at them as a whole, and they're still a decent team. They can still be a sneaky good team because their defense is all right. You know, it can keep them right. in games. So if they can get the job done, whether it be field goals or, you know, you're finding your open man and you're getting a, a touchdown, they can still find ways to win. So I think that's going to be a hard out for the Cowboys as well. Now, the Bengals and the Giants, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Giants will always play the Cowboys tough, so that's not going to be like an easy win. I think the Cowboys can are better than the Giants, and they can win that game, but the Giants always play them tough. The question mark to me here is that Bengals game. I think that Bengals game there is going to be very important for the Cowboys moving forward. Can I tell you the big question mark? Remember I told you I have the gauntlet, yeah. the six games that the Cowboys have. You know, they have the Lions. Texans, they've got the 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 Falcons, the Eagles, they've got the 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 Niners. The one game that I look at that I think is the second most winnable game for the Cowboys, believe it or not, is the San Francisco game. San Francisco lost to Arizona yesterday, twenty four to twenty three, dropping the record to two and three on the season. Again, Christian McCaffrey has been hurt most of the season, if not the entire season, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Look at the schedule that the, that the Niners have leading up to the Cowboys. Next week, on the road, primetime game, Thursday night game, in fact, on the road against the Seattle Seahawks. Geno Smith's been playing really well this year. Yeah, That's going to be a tough game. Then they host the Kansas City Chiefs, then the Cowboys. So the two and three... San Francisco 49ers conceivably could be two and five when they battle the Cowboys a month from now. 
that might be a two and five Niners team that is unraveling. That might be a get for the Cowboys there. That might be the second best opportunity for them to win because the Texans game is going to be tough. You know the game against the, the Commanders is going to be tough because that's going to be for the NFC East supremacy, at least at, the, for, at that point, right? It's funny, man. It's funny. But the Cowboys got to win. Yeah. The Cowboys are three and two. Big difference between three and two and two and three. They got to win. So Cowboy fans should be excited. I'm over here thinking to myself, yeah, they should be excited. They needed a win because the gauntlet's starting. But I'm also thinking to myself, that Steelers team that I saw over there, one step above Basuda. Just no. one step. Not, not complete trash, but they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to be a winning team. They're not going to have a winning record. It's going to be when we look back in the season of, so who did the Cowboys beat this year? Oh, yeah, they beat the Steelers. They were 3-1. and one. Yeah, but they ended the season 6-11. and 11. You know what's funny? Seeing. After, or well, during this game, Dak Prescott did something that no other quarterback has done yet. He threw two interceptions in two days because this game <laughs> it started so late <laughs> that he threw an interception in the first half, right? Then they yeah. go into past midnight, right? You're in another day, threw another interception. <laughs> so he went into another day and threw another interception. So he had two interceptions on two different days. That was crazy, man. But but you know, but Dak, Dak, you know, here's the thing. He struggled in the first half, but he corrected himself. And and I think that that is the veteran aspect of, of yeah. him, him being him. You know, you, you, you're you going to see players out there like when the Cowboys do play the Commanders and you have Dak Prescott against Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is the new shiny toy. He plays so well. Coming out of LSU, he's going to be rookie of the year. Just stay healthy. He's going to be rookie of the year. NFC, just book it. Yeah, look at that. At the same time, picks. who would you rather have as quarterback of a tie game just like this game? Or maybe a let's say that this game was tied with six or seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Do you trust Dak Prescott or do you trust Jaden Daniels in that situation? Nah, Dak Prescott, man. And that's the thing. There's something to be said about have, being a veteran because we saw C.J. Stroud as great of a season as he had last season – the second that he went up against the Ravens in the playoffs, he wet the bed. Are we having any good uh, comments coming on in? Because they're coming in fast and furious over here. They're making fun of you because they're saying that you're you're tired. Did you get it fixed? And then somebody says, Mike's lady changed it for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that a little bit, okay? So I, I came to visit the girlfriend over here. She lives in, the, in Conroe, which is uh, about an hour outside of Houston. And... Um, we I drove out here and I, and I do the drive over here. I've been doing it like two or three times a month, right? Come out here, spend a few days, come back home. Essentially, we spend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday together, and Monday through Thursday we're working, right? So on the way over here, I'm driving down I-10 and I'm going 80 miles an hour, and I'm never on the right lane. Never. I'm always on the left lane. And there's always like one car that's going 90 miles an hour, you just follow it, right? It's a pace car. So I'm following this car, and for some reason, I moved over to the right. And I'm on the right-hand lane, and I'm going through Columbus, Texas, which is basically a little bit more than halfway from San Antonio to Houston, probably about an hour outside of Houston. And I just hear a poof. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell just happened? And the, the, the wheel got really heavy. So at that point, I saw that I was at the exit for Columbus, Texas, and I moved off to the right. I'm like, well, let me just get off the road real fast. And I, I turn on the sensors to my car to see what the uh, air pressure is on my tires. And I see my air pressure just dying, dude. It goes like 30, 26, 22, 18. And I get to the stoplight. It says five. I grab my phone out, and I'm just plugging in tire shops. And there was a tire shop a mile away, right? So there I am basically on three tires making my way one mile down the street. I get to the tire shop. They don't have the tire that I have, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, that sucks. They go, well, sir, you do have a spare. We can put the spare on, 10 bucks. Perfect. I do have a spare. I was going to buy just another new tire, but they didn't have it. Yeah. So they take out my spare. My spare has been underneath my truck for three and a half years, dude. You know what? You know, I, the thing's not in any good shape. They put it in. The thing looks like trash. It's like a it's like a glorified donut. I mean, it's a, it's legit size, but it's a trashy 
tire. It's if you and I were driving down the tire shop on Culebra Road right now, it's the one that we'd see on the side of the road, right? Yeah. They put it in. It's enough for me to get over to where I need to get over here. I haven't been in the car ever since, but I went out there last night to go take a look at the truck. The damn donuts uh, is uh, is flat. I wasn't going to drive it home anyway. So now I'm trying to figure out, do I have a warranty on this? I called Discount Tire this morning. They said, no, you didn't buy it from here. I called Toyota. They said, I didn't buy it from here. And they keep telling me this is probably factory tires. And that's bull crap because I remember buying tires. I just don't remember where I bought them from. I don't remember. Yeah. So I got to go through the glove compartment after the show, see where they're from. There is a discount tire uh, outside the, the neighborhood over here. So basically, I just go out the neighborhood, which is maybe half a mile, go on to the access road. I don't even have to get on the freeway. Just go up the access road, do the U, turn around, and I'm at discount tire. Oh, my God. Midtown Texas, Mike pays to pump his gas. In other words, Dude, you have people. If there was full service, maybe, you know. AAA said, screw you. Nice. You know, I'm just glad that this ha that this happened in a city, right? Now, Columbus, Texas is not very big. But the fact that I was – and I was at the exit, literally right at the exit, and I had the presence of mind to move off to the right, it's awful. Who's saying to check my W-2? It's about my 1099s, baby. Mike should find a thick six tire for his truck. <laughs> <laughs> and here's you the thing. My lease – on my top on my truck is out in three months, right? I think January is when my lease is up, four months or so. Yeah, and then you got that wanna, balloon payment. I don't wanna I don't wanna well unless I upgrade to a tundra, then they'll just roll over the negative equity into it. Yeah. Tundras are super expensive, man, but they're nice. Well, the thing is is that for what I do for a living in financial services, um, I can write off a lease, but I cannot write off a purchase. So this is why I lease vehicles because it's a tax deduction for me. Uh, but the, the stipulations are it has to be under a certain weight. And I believe the weight, if I'm not mistaken, is 5,500 pounds. So I can go get an F-150 and lease it and write it off. But if I try to get a 250 or a 350 or Lone Star package this or Lone Star package, if it's above a certain weight, I cannot tax deduct it. And they know this because you plug it into the system, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm looking at it, and I want to get a new truck. I like having a truck, uh, just simply because I'm a homeowner. Uh, but uh, man, so I do a lot of driving, man. Got to do a lot of driving. Got to do what you got to do, baby. Swiss cooking you again. Come on, Mike. You don't remember where you purchased the tire, but I'm sure you remember the last Big Mac you had. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a Big Mac in about 20 years, dude. That's disgusting. You are going to to if you are going to uh, okay. I don't know if I was off at that point, but if you're going to McDonald's to buy a burger, you're doing life wrong, man. McDonald's burgers suck. Yeah. Back in the day, the Homestyle burger was okay. Back in the day. Yeah, you know one thing is though, you just can't remember where you brought your tire from. So it'd be funny if you did buy your tires from Walmart or something like that, man. No wonder it blew out. <laughs> I mean, dude, Michelin's are Michelin's, man. It doesn't matter where you get them. Bro. Oh, man, they ain't made the same, bro. They ain't made the same. I don't remember, man. I honestly yeah, don't. I usually just buy mine from um, Simple Tire. So Simple Tire is a place that's a factory, or not a factory, a warehouse they have up in Dallas, right? So they have yeah. tons of tires, name, brand, everything you can think of. And I usually just buy them there because they're cheaper, you know? It's a name, brand, tire. And then they just ship them to you for free so i get them here like in a day or two and then i have my boy that that's my guy that i go to here uh j and a tire off of marbach that's been my guy for yeah. years i just take him the tires and he's like boom 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 puts them on real quick man that's my guy yeah do you know what was funny about um the the whole tire situation going to columbus texas which is again it's it's small town texas right when you drive to houston you got Schulenburg. You've got you know you got you got uh, uh, Seguin first, and then you make your way over to Luling, and then you make your way to Schulenburg and Columbus. Small town people are different, man. It's different than San Antonio. It's different than whatever. And when I showed up with my truck and it's all jacked up, it's not that they didn't give a crap. They were like, "Hey, man, it's noon. 
you know, um, I had just had a, uh, a, 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 a meeting with my attorney regarding my, uh, my divorce, which should be finalized next month. He was like, it's, you know, it's just one of those things, Michael, you know, um, you know, we were all at lunch. It's noon. We'll get to you when we get to you, you know, that type of thing. They weren't being rude, but they were basically saying, Hey, you know, our food is more important, right? I get it. And I told the guy, I said, man, no rush. I got my computer here. I could work while I'm here. Um, just, just take your time. I was like, take your time. So the guy talks to me a little bit later on. I stand up about 10 minutes later to go to the restroom and I'm asking him, Hey, you know, where's the men's room at? And he goes, Oh, it's over here. And he goes, where are you headed, man? Are you headed to heat? Small town, right? Guys about my age, maybe a little bit younger. He goes, so where are you going, man? You, you going to uh, Houston? You going to San Antonio or Austin? Right? Because obviously, city boy, right? Yeah. And I said, I'm actually going to Lake Conroe. And he goes, Lake Conroe? I'm like, yeah. You know what he did? He goes, I'll get you right now. Uh. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man, small town wanted to help out small town you're going to a small town i'll give you a small town oh man. by the way one of the things about this weekend joe you know i bought boots before the rodeo last year my adiats yeah my girl bought me some boots this weekend dude some new some boots. alligator boots no I don't know. dude they're they're nice did before he tell the, the tire man Mike told the tire guy, they said, JHNSB said, Mike told the tire guy, do you know who I am? <sighs> Shay Shay said. saying Michelin for life, baby. Yep, Michelin. Do, do my tire, life. my tire, which is in the back of my truck right now, it just exploded. It just exploded. Well, how old are these tires, bro? I don't know, dude. They're, they're like, they're, they, I called the Toyota, they're like, they've got to be factory. But I don't drive tired. I don't drive my car that long without changing them. Maybe you, when you don't. Well, no, because I, I when you when you have a lease, you have to take it in for servicing when they tell you to take it in for servicing. So what? So part of the whole process is they check your tires, and if there's a problem with your tire, they replace your tire, and they say it's going to cost X amount to go do it. That's a problem. Mike's girl dropping a bunch of hints. Yeah. They said, Mike, you gotta, take, you gotta, you gotta style, take style. They said you gotta take the boots back if y'all don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's funny this weekend she'll be coming to San Antonio because we're gonna be watching the Jeff R. Curry uh comedian over at the Tobin Center on Friday. And then on Saturday, because here's the thing, dude. Here's the thing about getting divorced. I told I told uh, everyone that I've dated or whatnot since the since the uh, separation and whatnot. I have said my goal in life, Chris. Wait, put, put Chris's comment back up there. Which one? The one that the boots are gonna match my Rockets jersey. Screw that, man. Screw that. I am never cheering for the Rockets. I'm a Spurs fan. Por vida, baby. She's gonna repossess them and call and tell Mike. See you later, See you later. alligator. <laughs> <laughs> so uh here's the thing. Um we have the Jeff R. Curry show, and I said, I just want to be out and about, dude. I just want to go do stuff, right? Dude, living the married life where you were just sitting there on your ass all day long doing nothing, doing nothing but eating and watching TV, I don't want that life anymore, man. So we got the Jeff R. Curry concert or performance on Friday, and then back in Houston on Saturday, Boys to Men is performing along with Robin Thicke and 112, dude, Peaches and Cream. So excited about that, dude. God, I got some karaoke in this weekend, Joe. What did you do this weekend? I just actually just hung out here at the house, man. Got some stuff done that I need to get done around the house. And I went to a friend's birthday party on Saturday after I was done with the chores. Uh, my right. friend turned 40. So happy birthday to him or belated birthday to him, Ted. Happy birthday. We went to uh, celebrate at the Cove. It was a cool, cool little place at the Cove. You know, just yeah. hung out there for a little bit, had some beers called it an early evening came back home just chilled you know i watched the ufc fight uh i made it back home just in time to start watching the the main card so i was doing that and i was you know i was just chilling you know at that point 
the karaoke song that I did this week that got the most applause was If It Isn't Love by New Edition. Oh, God, man. Because the guy who ran the karaoke got excited about my age, African-American, loves New Edition. I didn't ask him to sing along with me, but he got up on stage with me, and we were doing the If It Isn't Love, Why Do I Feel This Way? We were doing the dances. It was great. Outdoor karaoke in the Woodlands, Texas. Oh, Sam's coming out saying, my, what does Sam say about no more marriages? He says, oh no, it was right here. There it is. Mike, no more marriages. I will run down the aisle and say, these two should not be wed. <laughs> and then they said the Cove has fire tacos. They fish do. Tacos. That's what they're known for, fish tacos. Yeah. Everybody's liking this song. Mike, oh, Mike was leaving La Vida Loca. You should sing that one. Upside, inside out, living la vida loca. Living la vida loca, dude. That's going to be the song that you're going to sing when we do karaoke. Hey, but let's go ahead and pause real quick and give some love to our one of the sponsors of the show, which is going to be MCS General Contracting. We appreciate the boys over there and all they do, man. MCS General Contracting, more than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business, honest pricing, high quality work. They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. There we go, man. So make sure you go and call MCS General Contracting for all your contracting needs. And they're the home of the Diamond Hard Concrete. If you need a free consultation, go ahead and hit up our boy, Chris Leha. Call him at 210-774-9155. And if you want it done right the first time, you call MCS General Contracting. So one thing yeah. that... We uh, Chris Leha is a big time fan of the uh, New Orleans Saints, just like I am. Uh, tonight we have Monday Night Football, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, who are Patrick Mahomes is going to be without his wide receiver one because he obliterated his knee last week, taking on the Saints. The Saints have a lot of injuries. I, I talk about confidence, but I saw the, the injury report. It's like 15 names on there, a lot of them on the offensive line. So if there's anything that gives me pause for the Saints, it's the fact that there's a ton of injuries and the offensive line, which has held up pretty well, and I was raving about it in week two. Lots of injuries there, man. Uh, but again, MCS General Contract does a fantastic job. Go Saints, baby. That's, what, that's who he cheers for. Um, Joe, this weekend, the best image in sports this weekend was not the touchdown that Dak Prescott threw to Jalen Tolbert. The best image happened on Broadway Street in Nashville – as the fans from Vanderbilt University, that nerdy school, ripped down the goalposts and carried it down the party district there in Nashville, where all the bachelorette parties go, where all the people are getting drunk at Morgan Wallen's and, and at, at Kid Rock's bar and John Bon Jovi's bar and Garth Brooks's bar. Joe, Vanderbilt beat number one ranked Alabama. They hadn't beaten Bama in 40 years. Go off and do that. Six of the top 11 teams lost this past weekend. What a great sight. When you saw that, Joe, what were your thoughts, man? I don't know, man. I was kind of like, you know, I guess it, I was like, it could sit tight, you know, but, you know, one thing that I'm, I'm looking at that we need to go ahead and put up here too is I need to go ahead and look for it because I just had it and that was going to be the AP poll. And right. we got to show oh. that as well. Well, we'll show that in one second. I, I, yeah. Please do call that up. Here are the teams that lost. Uh, Alabama, number one team in the night nation, no more. They lost to Vanderbilt 40-35. to 35. By oh. the way, the quarter the quarterback from Vanderbilt, Mexican-American out of New Mexico. Nice. He's a transfer. He, played, he wasn't he too played, ethnic for you, Mike? He played, he, played, he played Juco ball. He played Juco ball, made his way over to a small D1 school. Then he goes in the transfer portal into Vanderbilt, man. It's a fantastic. Uh, Tennessee, the number four ranked team in the country, loses to Arkansas 19 to 14. 
Miami was down by 20 plus points, came back to beat Cal 39 to 30. So they survived. But the ninth ranked Missouri Tigers got their asses handed to them by the Texas AM Aggies. Aggies beat the Tigers 41 to 10. Michigan, who lost to Texas early in this year, lost to Washington. And number that's the number 10 team. Number 11 team. USC also lost to Minnesota. So USC, Michigan, Missouri. Tennessee, Bama, that's five out of the top 11 teams. And let's see if I have the rankings right here. Here are the rankings from the Associated Press top 25. And it is your Texas Longhorns. 52 first place votes, Joe. Yeah. Ohio State is at number two with nine first place votes. By the way, Texas, the uh, the nine... People who didn't vote for them to be number one voted for them to be number two. So they were one or one or two in every single ballot this weekend, but 52 of the 61 went to Texas. Number three, Oregon. Number four, Penn State. Number five, Georgia. Now, Oregon and Penn State moved up three spots each. And in fact, they leapfrogged over Georgia because Oregon and Penn State are still undefeated. So one, two, three, and four are undefeated. Texas, Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State. The U, Miami, survive. Move up two spots. Now 6-0 on the season at number six in the nation. Bama drops from one to seven. Tennessee drops from four to eight. Ole Miss moves up three spots at number nine. You've got Clemson at 10. Tie is a tie for 11, Joe. Iowa State and Notre Dame. LSU stays at 13, BYU at 14, but the big mover, Joe, jumping up from 25 all the way to 15 is Texas A&M. There is a three-way tie right now for number 18, Joe. Iowa, I'm sorry, uh, that's uh, Iowa, that's uh, Illinois, uh, that's uh, Indiana, Kansas State, and, and Oklahoma. This weekend, Joe, you've got Texas taking on OU in the Red River rivalry. The spread, according to Vegas, Joe, 14 points. Texas here by 14. Wow. It's a big game, dude. Big game. You know, I'm I'm glad to see SMU in the 25, top 25. Yeah. You know, Uh, Texas A&M, kind of surprising, man. They moved up that much, you know? Well, considering the fact that they got their butts handed to them earlier in the season and everyone thought, man, that quarterback for AM sucks. And everyone gave up on the season. And there he is coming out there, balling out the past few weeks. Pretty fascinating, dude. Pretty fascinating. Yeah, man. So we had a good week of, of college football, you know. And we have a game coming up here shortly. And you know what that's going to be? It's going to be UT versus the Oklahoma, Oklahoma, man. That mm-hmm. one's always a good game, dude. Both teams, they get up for this one. And it doesn't matter what the record it, records are, right? Oklahoma notoriously plays Texas tough, and they've bested the Longhorns over the last couple seasons. So the Longhorns coming in as the number one overall seed, they, they want to go ahead and decimate this Oklahoma team, but you can never discount Oklahoma. Like I said, they always play Texas tough. I think it's going to be a hard-fought, uh, game, but I still think that Texas will wind up uh, winning this one. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one happening Saturday, October 12th, 2.30. The Red River Shootout, man. Uh, is that what they call the Red River Shootout these days? The Red River Shootout, man. So this one's going to be a good one. You know what's funny, though? My wife doesn't usually like watching sports at all, right? Uh, I don't care. For, she don't care for it. But when I put on this game, she likes watching this game. I don't know why, but she says Dude, it's, it's exciting. It's the pageantry of the game, man. It, it, it's the fact that you have half the half the stands in burnt orange and half the stands in that that whatever that Oklahoma crappy maroon is, whatever that is. Uh, they they have that going on there. It's it's a great thing. It's at the Texas State Fair. You have all of that going on at the same time in the backdrop. It's an amazing time out there. I've never been to the game itself. You try going to that game, it's, it's hundreds of dollars to get into the cheap Oh, seats. yeah, it's expensive. But, but I've been there for the uh, Texas State Fair while it's going on, and it's hectic, baby. 
It is crazy out there. A lot of things happening, man. And you know, the, the thing is, they're, they're talking about it in the chat right now. After Texas plays Oklahoma, after that game, the following week, they're playing Georgia. Yep. Back to back, baby. Boom, boom, boom. Dude, back if back. you win, if you win both of those games, you go seven and oh, it doesn't matter what you do the rest of the way during the playoff. If you have on your resume that you went to Ann Arbor and you beat Michigan, you have in your resume that on a neutral site you beat OU and you also beat Georgia. Resume set, dude. They can lose half the games the rest of the way. They can go 10 and 2. They can go 9 and 3. They're going to make the playoff. They're going to make it, man. Um, Spurs uh, take the court today, the first preseason game of the year. No uh, Victor Wembanyama, no Chris Paul, no Devin Vassell. Because of all that, no Michael Jimenez. I was planning on going, but when I saw that those were all the players that were going to be out, I was like, well, screw this. Yeah. I'm not paying my hard earned money to watch Blake Wesley play ball. Yeah, they're not going to even have Champagne play ball. They're not going to have Collins on there, uh, on the out there on the court as well, injuries and whatnot. So, I mean, the Spurs, it's going to be good to see Spurs basketball on once again. But for all intents and purposes, this is nothing more than a glorified exhibition game between yeah. like two G League teams, you know? Now, maybe next week when, you know, we're a week away from the start of the regular season, which begins for the Spurs on October 24th, so just 17 days away from that, that I can see, you know, they're going to have, have a tune-up game or two, right? I can see that. Uh, but, man, the first preseason game is going to be awful. With the no, I mean, I'll watch it, I guess. I don't even know where it's televised these days, but I'll watch it. Just one of those things, Joe. I'm just... I'll be interested in the regular season. Show me Stefan Castle. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Show you Stefan Castle. But I'll show you right now where you can watch your Spurs games at. This is going to be the spot that you can catch the games at. Tonight, the game's going to be televised on the CW here locally. CW35, which if you have uh, your over-the-air antenna, it's channel 4.2 on the local airwaves. 4.2. <laughs> 4.2. Yeah, because if you're you're looking, you're like, I have over the air antenna, right? I have my whole house wired for yeah. HD. So when you're flipping through stations, you have you know News Four, KMOL, right? Channel Four. Then you're looking for the CW, and you're like, okay, it's 35. No, not anymore. 35 is now. Uh, I don't know what it is. It, they changed the whole formatting there. But if you hit 4.2, you'll be able to find it there, and that's where you're going to be able to watch tonight's game. Uh, and that's going to be interesting to me to see a first look at Stefan Castle. Hopefully he gets some minutes here. He plays. We get to see what the young man can do. You know, I know Spurs fans are very excited. High draft pick. They want to see the kid. They want to get a first look at him. I know I am. So I'm looking forward to the game nonetheless. I'll be watching it as I'm working tonight. You know, I have it on the TV. I want to see Keldon Johnson. I want to see what Keldon does with his new body frame. Uh, what position they, they try to play him at. Uh, I, I'd be fascinated to see his development. Um, let's see what's going on on Jeff Garcia's uh, 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 feed right now, man, because Jeff Garcia provides us that daily content when it comes to the Spurs. Let's show him some love real quick and then see what he's working on today. Sure. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G. Kens 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G. Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked on Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked on Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Again, Jeff G at, at Jeff G Spurs Zone on Twitter. Jeff Garcia with that daily content of your San Antonio Spurs. Uh, let's see here. He's got uh, talking about the Spurs preseason game tonight. Saying the Austin Spurs also made a trade, and you can get some. Um, you can take a look at what that and the details of that as well. He's also bringing us some news, letting us know that. Battle of Flowers Parade information is going to be coming coming about here tomorrow. They're finally oh. going to unveil the, I guess the the logo. You know, who, what artists won, which uh, you know rendering they like the best here. Uh, he's also talking about 
a discussion of Spurs shooting via basketball intelligence here. He's talking with uh, basketball intelligence, kind of showing uh, some of the information that they have there. Yeah. So just so got, got some stuff going on today, too. So I know that uh, he's going to be at the Big Texas Comic Con this week. So we're going to be yeah. uh, hearing some things about Jeff, probably teasing, you know, things that he's going to be uh, talking about because he is going to be the MC of the event. So make sure you go ahead and follow Jeff G at Jeff G Spurs Zone so you can see all his latest content that's going to be coming out, especially if you're a big nerd at heart. You're going to want to see the news about Big Texas Comic Con coming up. Hey, if you have uh, friends in the Florida area, you might take a look at what's going on in the news. Have you seen that, Joe? No, what's another, going on? Another hurricane has popped up, and in fact, it intensified over the overnight to a Category 4 no, and it's man. going straight to Florida right now. In fact, I had a text message from a friend right now saying that uh, she's heading out to Florida to go evacuate some family over there. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, I woke up this morning. First thing I saw in the news was that. I was like, where did it come from? And it's weird. All the storms are gravitating from the from from Mexico and going east. When they typically gravitate from like Cuba and go west towards us, they're going the opposite way. I have no idea why that is. Yeah. Uh, but there's some scary uh, situation developing right now because we saw what happened in North Carolina. Now we're seeing what might happen in Florida. Very, yeah. very, very. Tim Gonzalez brings up a good uh, point right here. He says, Mike and Joe, don't forget about the debut of the new play by play announcer tonight. The new guy that they just announced about a week ago that's going to be Joe, joining you. Know, go, go on to my YouTube, my YouTube, go on to my uh, uh, Twitter account. That yeah. announcer, I, I, I posted a story about him. Let's see if we can call up the video of him as to who he is because that was a big controversy because a lot of people wanted that other guy that was doing the halftime show during the Spurs game. I forgot his name. To be honest with you, everyone was all over in their feels about him, and they were like the Spurs uh, did him dirty and whatnot because Bill Land, again, has retired because of uh, – well, I mean, he was of age to retire or early 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but, you know, he he's, he's loved and missed and the whole – Whoa, mama, and all that stuff. Gonna be honest with you, I thought Bill Land was all right. I was pretty good. Uh, I wasn't one to think that um, um, that he was going to. I didn't think Bill Land was like the greatest thing of all time. I thought he did a good job. But if you go onto my page, Joe, yeah, this is it right here. Okay, that's my page. Okay, I keep scrolling. Oh, there it is. The the the, the YouTube uh, link right there. Yeah, that I have on there. Go ahead and click on that. I found this to be interesting. So Sunday work the, schedule. The Spurs hired a guy named Jacob Toby to be yeah. the new play-by-play guy, right? Jacob Toby is a was a former news anchor there in Denver. He was a sports anchor over there. He covered all the major sports teams over there. But on top of that, he's a singer. He plays at bars and he plays at clubs and things like that. And he's a legit singer. So there's a, there's an article that I I linked on my. Um, Twitter account about this guy, and it made me fascinated because he's a young-looking guy. I think they say he graduated college in 2018, so I have no idea what his age is, but this guy's young, man. Yeah, This guy is young, and I love it. I want there to be a youth movement within the Spurs. I thought <laughs> it would have happened somewhere else on the team, but this guy is very, very young, and it, 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 as, as this goes on, it's doing a day in the life of him, and it shows that you know he goes on to the studio – he reports on sports. You know, he, he does his thing. He has to look good to make it all happen. But it talks about the other passions that he has in life. And one of the passions that he has in life is music and how he performs when it, when he's out and about. So if you want to uh, fast forward to, to him playing. Oh, there it, he is. It's pretty. Yeah. See, so, you know, breweries and nightclubs and whatnot. He's out there singing along. And that is the Spurs new announcer right there. New play-by-play guy yeah. to go along with Sean Elliott. Very good voice. I'm going to try to get the guy on the show, man. Jacob Toby, let's make it happen, baby. Yeah. Try to get him on, dude. See if he uh, is up for it. Because I know he's going to be yeah. busy well, be, you know, right now calling games dude. and whatnot. Dude, so many people were like, why did they hire him? You know, They should have given it to the other guy. Dude, if this guy is, a, a, is an upcoming star... Which, which, if you were in your early 30s, if it was what I'm assuming, I would say this probably, I, I'd say he's probably 32, right? Get that guy. Get that guy. Why do we need to have announcers always be in their 60s and 70s? Get the young guy. That's the thing. 
And in the 10, 20 minutes I saw him doing his work, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. And, and you know, they're like, the Spurs are like, oh, are, are. by the way, this guy had some tie in with the Spurs already. He worked with the Spurs organization, according to Jeff Garcia. But on top of that, on top of that, I know the people who make this decision, right? I know one of the guys that's in charge of Spurs broadcasting. They're not going to hire a guy unless they think that the guy is capable, man. They're not going to go like, oh, we're just going to take a – this guy has calls games for Big 12. He calls he calls games for um, college, you know, uh, and, and others, other sports as well. I'm sure the guy's decent, dude. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Uh, look at this, Jesse A. They should have hired Mike Taylor for play-by-play. I love me some Mike Taylor, but they, they weren't going to allow a people I want to punch uh, segment on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he played for the, he was play by play for the Austin Spurs. So because of that, he's part of the fabric of the Spurs anyway, you know? So it's just they called him up to the big leagues. Apparently, he was doing a decent enough of a job. But uh, uh, congratulations to Jacob Toby. And apparently, he lost his luggage or something like that. I saw a story about that on his Twitter account. I've been following him. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, Joe. Yeah. Monday night football tonight. Yeah, we got Monday night football. It's just one game tonight, not the double header. Five point spread. Five point spread. That is a, a, a interesting thing because I would think more often than not, that spread should be eight. Yeah. But you have no wide receiver one for the Chiefs anymore. You have the fact that they have a backup running back out there. You have the fact that Travis Kelsey just turned 35. That team is ripe for the taking. That team should not be making the Super Bowl this year. So I'm hopeful for my Saints. Very kind of social apparel. Mike hates old people. Do you know what I hate? I hate it when people when people stay past their their welcome. Like Coach Pop. <laughs> Your favorite target. Oh God. Damn. Well, well, I mean, there was a reason why I didn't want Biden or Trump to win the White House this year. Why? Yeah. Too damn old. Too damn old. Biden right now is too damn old to be president. They're too damn old. Yeah. All these people in Congress who are 80 years old, both Republican and Democrat, who who couldn't get a job to save their life other than politics, right? The Ted Cruz of the world who wants to be senator for 90 years, right? Win elections by 3% each time. Screw all those people, dude. I just don't like... People pass or prime. At some point, the boomers need to get the F out of the room, dude. Just get the F out of the room. You don't want anymore. You know, one thing that we need I'm to show. The, president. the law states that they have to be 35. No, oh, God. I was going to say one thing that we need to talk about, too, is we need to talk about MLB playoffs. They are, are still going on here. And we have the Tigers versus the Guardians here. Uh, Cleveland is winning that series 1-0. You have the Mets and the Phillies. The New York Mets are winning that series 1-0. You got the Yankees and the Royals. The New York Yankees game. are in the lead, man. 1-0. San Diego Padres and the Dodgers, man. Dodgers are winning that series 1-0. Dude, the Padres. Um, and then, you look, that was on, on Saturday, right? So yesterday yeah. we had some finals as well. And now we have the Phillies and the Mets. And that game is uh, – that series is tied up at one apiece. And this is one that I was watching with uh, Steph yesterday, too, because we were watching the Cowboy game and the delay. They had the Dodgers and the and the Padres. Padres winded up winning that game, so their series is tied up at one apiece. And then you got some games coming up here uh, today. So, I mean, the MLB play playoffs are going hot and heavy right now, Mike. Yeah, two games today. You got the Royals and the Yankees. That's a, a 635 uh, first pitch. Yankees lead that series 1-0. That's going to be at Yankee Stadium. And they got the Tigers and the Guardians uh, over there in Cleveland. Uh, Guardians up 1-0 in that series. Uh, those are the games today. That game is going to be on at 3 o'clock. Um, speaking about old people, uh, I saw trending on social media on Twitter last night. People bragging on Bob Costas. God. Saying that he's too old to be doing play-by-play -play for Major League Baseball playoffs. And they were showing these plays that he was doing where they said that he sounded like he was asleep. Now, I wouldn't go that far, but it wasn't that good, man. Bob Costas has been a fixture of sports 
my entire life. Right? I'm looking at how old Bob Costas is. Bob Costas is there. 73 years old. 73 years old. Man. Um, this is a guy that's been that was with NBC Sports beginning in 1980, dude. So he's been around doing baseball since I was three years old. That's a and long it wasn't, time. It wasn't good, dude. It wasn't good. It just wasn't. Get the new voices over there, man. Get some young blood, some young people. Why do I have to listen to the same eight people over and over again, man? Why? Why do we have to listen to the same old fuckers, dude? I'm tired of these people, man. Move on. ESPN. I watch on ESPN 4 o'clock. Tony Kornheiser and Mike Wilbon. Get those dinosaurs off the stage. It's done. We've seen it already, man. We've seen them. Get somebody new out there, man. Dude. It's like listening to 995 Kiss. It's the same 15 songs on repeat. Oh, God. You know, one thing I got to show, too, got to give a shameless plug to what we're doing here. Uh, yeah. I went ahead and re uh, recorded some episodes of the Area 210 podcast because, you know, we're getting ready for the start of the Spurs season. And that's what we talk about, San Antonio Spurs bas basketball. So I had to, you know, I had to go ahead and uh, record some episodes. Uh, I believe it was Thursday. And then I recorded an episode on Sunday. First one up, man. I had a I had a guest on. His name is Paul Garcia. Uh, Paul Garcia used to work with me over at Project Spurs, and we recorded an episode here talking about the veterans' influence on the young core. Make sure you go and check that out. It's already up on the Alamo Cities uh, Podcast Network YouTube channel. And then after this episode right here, if you want to stick around, we have a premiere. Uh, this is going to be the uh, other episode of the Area 210 Podcast, and we're examining the Spurs depth chart. And we're also going to be talking about, you know, starting lineups. We're going to be talking about the Spurs' strengths and weaknesses going into the regular season. The guest that I had on for this one was Noah Magaro George, who does a great job covering the Spurs, talking Spurs basketball yeah. with me. So make sure you go and check that out, man. So we had a really good discussion on both of these episodes. So if you're a Spurs fan, hey, come over and give us a little bit of love and listen to both of these episodes. Yeah, he's a good follow on Twitter, man. I'm glad that you had him on. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, exactly. Noah's, Noah's uh, uh, I helped him, you know, kind of get started when he was first starting here and continue to just have, uh, you know, a little a relationship here with seeing how he's doing, how he's growing, all that kind of stuff. So it's good to see, you know, people that come right in, you know, in the very beginning and you, you help them a little bit and then you watch them grow. You know, even like Paul Garcia was producing the Spurs cast there for a while as well. And, you know, that was growing as well. So it's good to always be involved in helping people grow, you know. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's show some love to Mima, man. 210-508-0369. Yeah. Let's do that. You know, I, I travel for business, dude. Uh, I, I go get business wherever it's at, whether it be Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, the Hill Country. I go to Florida for business. I go to Louisiana for business. Uh, I now manage $15.6 million worth of retirement assets. So people come up to me with, you know, IRAs, 401ks. Uh, they want to know what's the best thing that they, they should do, they could do for their investments, and I help them through that process. 210-508-0369. Got a text message just a little while ago asking me the question, do you do life insurance? Damn straight I do. Whether it be term insurance or permanent insurance, I do life insurance, disability, long-term care, things like that. I've been, I've been uh, licensed for 19 years. I restarted my practice during COVID. And in that time... $15.6 million that made their way over to me. Somebody, 10000 here, 50000 there, 100000 there, 200000 there. It all adds up, man. And I love doing what I do. I help people manage their retirement assets or just their investments to begin with. Not all, not all investments are designed for retirement. So give me a call, 210-508-0369. Uh, part of the people that I work with also do auto insurance and homeowners. So if you need help with that, uh, I don't do it personally. I'm licensed in it, but I don't do it. Uh, I can get you in touch with people who can shop that around for you. 210-508-0369. So Joe, last night I um, saw what I'm, I'm going to go off and say is my favorite sports movie of all time. Now, my favorite sports movie of all time is probably Major League Joe because that's, yeah. that's comedy. Then there's also Field of Dreams, which is a great movie. Uh, but uh, 
Dude, every time I watch it, I cannot tell you how much I love The Fighter with Mark Wahlberg and uh, wow, my God, who, who uh, what's 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 her name? Um, the redhead. I forgot her name in that movie. Anyway, we saw I saw The Fighter. Christian Bale, fantastic guy, fantastic job, great movie about Mickey Ward uh, leading up to his. It, they, don't, they don't show the Gotti Ward's the yeah. trilogy in that movie. Uh, but it shows how Mickey Ward kind of made a name for himself and, and all the struggles he had to go through and whatnot with his family. Great movie, dude. Great movie. Yeah, one thing that we're, I wanted to talk about or touch on here is, I don't know if you saw this, but over the weekend, uh, we had some news that popped off here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. I'm going to show it on screen. So The Athletic is reporting that Jabril Peppers, a star safety for the New England Patriots, was arrested Saturday morning and is expected to be charged with assault and battery, strangulation, and drug possession. The team has wow. says that they have been made aware of the issue and they're following it closely, uh, going and pulling the article straight off NFL.com. Uh, you can see that, you know, some of the charges that are outlined in here. Uh, police said that Monday in a statement that it hit it responded to a disturbance at a residential address on October the 5th with the caller indicating an altercation between two people. Peppers was arrested after ensuing investigation. So, I mean, there's a battery of uh, charges that are coming up against him, man. Uh, I wonder yeah. what's going to happen with him moving forward and with the Patriots. When things like this usually happen, what happens is that a team will wind up moving away from said players. So we'll see what's going to happen here. I mean... These are some serious allegations that are being brought up against him, you know? Yeah, and the word that's on there that is really big is strangulation. Dude, for real, man. Yeah, that that most definitely you need to kind of understand that that is a – that that usually involves uh, a female victim, and that's when it becomes a little bit more uh, serious. I mean, you sometimes have an assault where – uh, you know, people are get into a shouting match and they have to be separated. And it's called simple assault. Uh, but whenever you see the word uh, strangulation, uh, there's evidence of something somewhere. But uh, yeah, and and the, he's, innocent, he's innocent until proven guilty. But still, that's kind of that's yeah, not the, a good sign. The Patriots coach, you know, he was talking to reporters Monday morning, you know, yeah. and he was saying that they've been informed, um, you know, of what's going on. They're still gathering information. And the Patriots released a statement and they said they're aware of the incident involving Jabril Peppers over the weekend in which police are currently investigating. And they said they had no further comment at this time because they're still gathering all the information to make a determination of what steps need to ensue next. Is there any truth to the rumor that Zeke Elliott's going to be charged with uh, theft? Uh, from no rob rob robbing the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, God. Man, Zeke just looked. He just looks horrible, man. That's funny, man. That's funny. Hey, fellas, uh, I know we're going to – we usually go to 1130, but I got to cut it close because uh, – cut it short because I got to go to Discount Tire. I got to figure all that out, man. Uh, it's going to be a long day. I'm going to go spend hundreds of dollars on a tire, man, for a truck that I'm going to be turning back in in three months. God. Brutal. Brutal, Joe. Brutal. It is, man. But we'll have more things to talk about tomorrow. We're actually going to have some Spurs basketball to talk about. Discuss we'll it tomorrow. About, yeah, we'll also talk about Monday Night Football. Chiefs and uh, and the Saints tonight at, from Arrowhead. Uh, Chiefs are by five. We'll also have some uh, news involving the uh, – we'll have the power rankings coming out tomorrow when it comes to the NFL. And then we're also going to have uh, the ability to talk a little bit more about the Texas Longhorns because, man – they're looking good, man. You know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta start talking about that OU matchup against UT. OU, Georgia, next on the docket, next on the schedule for the for the uh, Longhorns. Yeah, they get through that, man. Clear sailing to the playoffs, baby. Clear sailing. Yeah. And at some point, we might have to start talking about the uh, Aggies. No, oh, man. I mean, they're top fifteen. <laughs> yeah, Am they I are. Start watching them. Damn it. We gotta ask oh. Johnny Walker. We got him on on Friday. Very nice. Joe, it was a good show, dude. We had a lot to get into today, man. It was a good show. Thank you so much. Hit the like button on the way out the door. Thank you so much for, for being part of our show. Uh, lamest joke ever. 
Mike, did you have to? Did you say you have to watch Urban Cowboy? I loved Urban Cowboy, dude. The whole Team Sissy versus Team Pam. I watched Urban Cowboy as one of the man. last uh, things that I did at San Antonio Sports Star. Team Pam here, man. Yeah, dude. Pam's hot. You can find a sissy anywhere. Pam's smoking hot, dude. She's smart. Pam had the money. She had the money. Pam had the money. She was going to leave you eventually, but you'll always say, man, I had that one girl. I had that girl, Pam, in Houston. That hot piece of ass. That's what you got to think about right there. Because uh, you can find a sissy anywhere, dude. That whole that whole Mickey Dillies, was that, was that what it was called? Mickey Gillies, rather. Yeah, Gillies. Uh, was was all was there? Dude, there was there was there was a uh, What's it called? It was, it was uh, there. Was the other girls? There's not Pam, but um, Deborah Winger's character, Sissy. There were sissies everywhere in there, dude. She's just another chick. Bar Pam, yeah. Pam though, Nugget. <laughs> Everyone have a fantastic day. I'm gonna get a tire, man. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yep. See you boys tomorrow. Bye.